soi-même dans un endroit éloigné et isolé est important pour rester intègre à ces histoires personnelles de ville et de banlieue. La civilisation a un subconscient. Si on perd contact avec les ondes au-delà de la vie quotidienne, c'est soit parce que nous avons décroché ou parce qu'il n'y a plus personne de l'autre côté pour diffuser vers les gens normaux et leur dire « Avec le temps, c'est votre monde qui devient de moins en moins réel, pas le mien. » I'm in a band called Circus Devils. It was started in 2001 by Robert Pollard. Robert is better known for his other work as a solo artist and for his band Guided by Voices. Bob is the vocalist and lyric writer, and me and my brother Tim do the music. I always thought the songs had a lot of potential for visuals, but up until around 2007, we hadn't done any music videos. Todd and I met uh, in 2007 when I contacted him uh, to record. And I was making videos, making music videos for, for my band. And I, you know, he said he wanted to make some, some music videos for Circus Devils and asked if I wanted to help out. And uh, I said yes, you know, and uh, it worked out well because he, he wanted to direct these videos and he had ideas about what, how they wanted to, or you know, how they were going to be um, made and he didn't want to be in front of the camera, he wanted to be behind the camera, so um, he was like, well, would you do this? And I was like, yeah, sure, I'll do whatever you want. First off, it was basically, you know, Todd handing me this mask that he found on eBay and saying, you know, would you be willing to wear this mask with no shirt on uh, and, you know, like a biker glove. The first time that I played Sergeant Disco, uh, <clears throat> I was coming up with dance moves and, and I was watching the Rolling Stones during their, um, like, you know, during their disco era, like, and uh, watching how Mick Jagger moved with the kind of, like, effeminate, like, swagger that he has, and um, kind of incorporated that into, into how the character moves.
The mask is basically covering up all of my face, so so the um, in order to convey any emotion, the sergeant has to, you know, any any of his facial emotions comes solely from, <laughs> you know, my jaw, like his, you know, his 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 jaw and his lower lip, and then a lot of like face or a lot of um, body motions to to kind of um, convey what he's trying to get across, or you know, a command or a question or whatever. Um, it's almost like pantomime. I, I do remember um, we were at Mr. Fun's costumes, Todd and I. Like, I, I, we were kind of walking around and I found this ridiculous orange turtleneck <laughs> at Goodwill already and then we found this like Swiss, this yellow Swiss um, kind of yodeler hat or something. That was the idea, was to make Corey look as, as ridiculous as, as I could because we had been best friends for so long and, you know, had a, you know, torrid friendship at points and I was getting back at him for all the, all the shit that he ever did to me. He didn't always seem to come from a, a very, like, clearly emotional place where there could be an easy inspiration for that. So I tended to pretend or imagine what it would be like to have certain different mental illnesses, I suppose. Um, to me, Professor Salmon um, is this magical wizard who unfortunately suffers uh, with Asperger's syndrome. Sometimes we're not sure if the professor's loyalties are in the right place. I think that gives the character some extra dimension. I, I have favorite movie villains that I kind of incorporated into that because I don't really have much experience acting. This is Circus Devils Project, so it's really the only acting I've ever done. So the best I could do, I figure, would be to impersonate, you know, Darth Vader, the Joker, and, you know, um, what's his face from Clockwork Orange? <laughs> but do that while in a dress, which was creepy enough, you know. Just became kind of a natural progression after we made, you know, four or five videos uh, to, to kind of venture into making a, a feature film, I guess. for your question. Now look down. Now ask him another question. Okay. okay. Same thing. Just cut some cheese. You pretend you're answering the phone. No. Stop. <laughs> Shiver. Be more demonstrative. Turn to me. Turn. That's right. Pirouette. Slowly. That's that's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
somewhat chaotic, the process making it was somewhat chaotic. Uh, didn't seem like we had too much of a plan. Go ahead. You know, all the, <clears throat> all the characters more or less came about in this sort of uh, primordial soup of, of uh, wardrobe and costume stuff in the back of Todd's truck. I had no idea what the movie was really about. We had just talked about the, a character, and I, and in no context. It, it didn't feel like we were working with anybody, really. It just we were just hanging out and just being weird with the camera on us, just acting out these like stoner fantasies. Careful with that X, Eugene. Can I can I describe Todd's creative process? Um, no. <laughs> Todd had a master plan, but it wasn't always clear to us. But that was intentional because a lot of the shots we were coming up with were on the spot, and there were, you, you know we developed a lot of it uh, while filming. a Frankenstein creature because that was a product of science and this is more of a product of magic I mean I was trying to imagine what it would be like to just be inserted into like this body and to, for just to have sudden consciousness you know when you were nothing Brad felt a little bit lost in his role especially at the beginning but I think that was helpful because the character is lost. And then he gradually wakes up and reconnects with his humanity. By the end, he's at peace with himself, thanks to the sergeant's good nature. New boy, don't let it slip away. Steve assembled this costume for Corey, along with the snake eyeglasses. As soon as Corey put everything on, he became New Boy from the Circus Devils song. New boy appears usually before some something terrible happens. He's like an omen. And you can see he enjoys his role. New boy, I'll get to work. Keep new boy on everything around you. Mrs. Fleer is the sergeant's mom. She recognizes him right away and offers him a permanent refuge. But the sergeant isn't ready for that yet. The other person from the world of normal, everyday people who has any real role in the story is Dr. Usher. As you can see, Dr. Usher is a normal, everyday person. There's an untold backstory to the movie. There's the scientist, Dr. Gregory Fleer, who develops a drug that not only alters his mind, but changes the structure of his brain. In the process, he becomes this new character a reduced version of himself. All the trappings of his personality have been stripped away, so in some ways he's more like a child than a man. The world is more or less a nightmare to him because of his altered perceptions, so he retreats back into nature, where it's safe by comparison. But he keeps coming back to the world because he wants to be part of it again and get back to the person he used to be. One effect of the drug is that it partitions the mind into separate identities. The mask is a reminder to him that he is one person with one identity. The mask is not subject to the changes going on inside his brain, so it allows him to cling to the illusion of preserving that original self. The backstory is never spelled out in the movie and nothing is really explained. I like the idea of immersing the viewer completely in the sergeant's world. While filming, it was a similar situation with the actors. The idea was to have the actors inhabit that world, so the backstory was never used as a reference for motivation. My children. 
Now raise it to your, to your face. 